This is Boxing Tickets NA, and um, we're joined with Graham McCormick. How are you, Graham? Hi, All right, pal. You are definitely a, a happy, happy camper at the moment. Yeah, man, big time, big time. Buzzing, buzzing um, at the minute, yeah. So, so you've obviously been out of the ring since July 2019, and yeah. obviously you broke the news, sort of. I had been sort of talking to you in the background, sort of as if you'd be returning, but you broke the news on Saturday night that you're going to be turning to the returning to the ring very soon. Yeah, tell us more about it. Yeah, man. yeah, man. Um, great opportunity came my way a couple of weeks ago. Um, a friend of mine, Willow Mack, had been chatting to Andy O'Neill, and the two lads were talking about um, other as far as that ran a show in America. And my friend Willow Mack asked Andy, any chance? Graham could get on the show, and that was really it, man. The lads got me on the show, you know. So I'm very, very grateful to be to be returning in America, first time fighting in America, man. It's a, it's a massive opportunity on the 26th of March, and the show Dick and the show Declan Gary's headlining, and also Robert Burke is fighting on it as well. So just a fucking, and sorry for my language, an absolute great opportunity, man, for uh, for me to return, man, in America, man. It's a dream come true, like to, to fight in America, man. So when this opportunity was was, was Put to me, I was like, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Like, I was like, yeah, lovely. Let's go. Like, you know what I mean? And you know, with everything that's been going on, like, who knows when I was going to get a fight? Like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. this was kind of a no. I didn't even have to think about it. But it was just let's go. Like, you know what I mean? Like America, boom, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of, sort of having to pinch yourself, you know, with with everything that's going on. You know, the last year with the pandemic and everything else. You didn't know if sort of you're going to make your return to box and things like that. But now you have an opportunity to fight in America. You're you sort of nearly have to check your shoes to make sure you haven't stood and yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly it, man. Like, I, I, I didn't even know if I was going to fight again, man. I did, like, as like I said before we started, like, I was genuinely thinking about just packing it in. Like, not because of anything, but because it just wasn't, didn't seem to be going anywhere, man, for a while. You know what I mean? And, and, and life, had been, life was busy and stuff like But now I have this opportunity in front of me and, and God, like, God willing, like, it'll be all good. And, and God knows what comes after that, like, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely has, you know, um, sort sort of obviously, you know, last two years sort of probably been tough for you, obviously in a way. Your last fight was in July 2019. Um, you obviously then announced a an amicable split with Box in Ireland, so there was no sort of there was no hatred or anything else to like that. So no. you, was, you were sort of then looking for, I guess, opportunities and sort of find yourself as well, you know, within yeah. that time. Yeah, there was no, there was no, um, there was no bad blood there between me and, and the lads, Gunnar and, and Stephen Sharp. It was just we'd come to the end of our term, like we'd come to the end of it. You know, there was no, I've nothing bad to say about the lads. You know what I mean? And and you know they helped me get the five and all, like so. Not bad to say about the lads. There was no, um, there was no beef there or nothing like that. It's just my time to move on. You know, that's I suppose in life, no matter what we do, there always comes a, an end point or something, and and time for you to take the next step. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, look. Then, then it was kind of like then the pandemic kind of hit because I was due to be on that ranking show in Waterford mm -hmm. last year, and then the pandemic hit and that blew up everybody's plans, man. And then boxing was just up in the air for for small hall fighters, like you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. then it was kind of like, will I fight again? Like you know what I mean? Am I going to fight again? I'm not getting any younger. I'm 33 years of age. You know what I mean? And you know, life is busy. Kids, you know, the wife. Job, house, you know, life, life gets in the way of, of things. Life comes, you know, my family comes first, obviously, before anything, man. So yeah. that was kind of on my mind. It was kind of like, you know, I, I'm very proud of how far I've come in the boxing world because no one expected me to get to five. You know, I, I didn't have the greatest amateur. I didn't win any other titles, and I turned pro with the kind of attitude as I'm tough, I'm strong, and I just, I just enjoy fighting, like, and I was given the opportunity and I took it. So. I was kind of like, look, I'm very proud of how far I've come. You know, I, I show people what we can do when we believe in ourselves, how we can change our lives around. You know, I went from a a, a guy going in and out of jail in his 20s, drinking and drugging, you know, crime, all that stuff, to, to a guy who lives a good life today, mm -hmm. you know, to get himself to five. You know? So I was kind of like sitting on the fence with that kind of like, okay, look, maybe it's time now like to move on to the next chapter in my life. Yeah. Well, like I said, before we started, I had a chat with my wife and... and one of the main things I'd said was, you know, I'm not going to leave the boxing game with any regrets. So, I kind of went back training. I wasn't really enjoying it as much. And then I had another chat with my, with my trainer, my good friend, Sean Kelly, and all my good friends, you know, down here in Limerick, like Anthony Ross, Colin, all, all my own people, like, and they kind of gave me the boost to, fuck it, Graham, like, keep going. Like, you know, I don't drink or smoke. I don't put anything bad into my body, bar a bit of pizza. 
<laughs> but other than that, like, so I'm fresh, you know, I was trained, so I was just, fuck it, I went back training, I was kind of enjoying it, and then this opportunity came in America, man, and I was like, let's go, like, this is a sign from God to me, I'm a big believer in God, and I believe when you put good stuff out to the universe, it comes back, you know what I mean, so mm. this came to me, and I was like, fuck it, this is, this is my opportunity now to, to go again, you know what I mean, and hope that this, this, get, this, this, this keeps the ball rolling, you know. Yep, definitely. And I say, you know, it, I guess it's sometimes testimony, you know, where you're, you're sort of talking, you know, in your 20s and everything else and things weren't going well for you. Now, yeah. now you're obviously um, 33 and sort of getting a bit of good luck now with it, where it's now going, you know what, maybe the decisions I made in the past weren't good, but obviously the decisions yeah. I'm making now is obviously shaping your future. That's exactly, look, man, that, that's exactly, like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up on five years clean and sober in May. But before that, but like my life was absolutely chaotic. Like all I knew was fucking was crime and, and, and going in out of jail and drinking and drugging and, and just being an absolute scumbag. Like and you know, I'm not ashamed to say that today because that's not my life today. But now I live a really good life. I still have hard times and I still get hard days and I and I still have days where I just don't want to do anything. But yeah. Most of the time I live a good life and I get good things in return because I do my best to be a good person today. And that's what life has taught me. And that's why I continue to box because that's what I want to show people is that when we work hard on ourselves, mentally, physically, emotionally, you can have good things in your life. You know what I mean? And, and boxing was my way to show that to people. Like, you know what I mean? And, and that's why I'm going to continue to do it for as long as... Like, I have in my head when I'm going to stop boxing man do you know what I mean because like like you know and I know you know I'm not 25 you know what I mean yeah. I feel the punches a lot more now than I did when I was younger when I was even an amateur boxer so, so do I have forever no but I'm going to enjoy what I do have left and I'm going to give it my absolute all you know so mm -hmm. you know by making the right decisions has led me to this 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 part of my life you know I'm always a firm believer in myself sometimes you know and what's for you will never pass you by and you know exactly yeah you know we're the the good thing that you are, Graham, is you're honest and obviously where you've come from because sometimes people will try and hide their past because they're ashamed yeah. of it, but, but you're not ashamed of it away because what's happened to you in the past has, has led to where you are now. So, you know, exactly. not everybody's going to have, you know, this this glamorous history of, of things, but, but you've got that past behind you now that they'll spur you on for your future and what you have yeah. in boxing, you know? No, I've, li I've lived a tough life, man. So, like, that, that was another one of the reasons I turned pro. You know what I mean? Like, I I've been through the wars in life, like, so I, I don't have fear of failure, man, because I've I failed so many times in my life mm -hmm. previous. So, like, there, there's no fear of failure there anymore, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's about growing as a person and boxing is a part of that. Mm -hmm. And when I'm finished with boxing, I'll move on to the next chapter to continue to grow, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and sort of sort of looking back then, so at thirty three now, what, what age did you start boxing? I actually started boxing at fifteen. I'm boxing a long time, man. Like I started mm -hmm. boxing at fifteen years of age. I, I had a good amateur. Like I had a lot of amateur fights as a young kid. Um, I've, I, I don't like I have lots of them off my book. I have about twenty five, thirty on my book, and I have about twenty off books. I had about fifty amateur fights, but I was coming and going from boxing from fifteen to when I turned pro. Like I had my battle with addiction and I had my battle with alcohol. So like as a teenager, it was a lot, you know, I was, I was boxing a lot more. And then I, I moved to Australia and I came back and I went back boxing. And then I kind of was coming and going because I, I, that's when life started to get a bit hard. You know, I started to get involved with the wrong people. You know, mm -hmm. I started, you know, I had my first child, you know, life, life, life just spiraled. But I, luckily for me, man, I know, and, and I always kind of go back to this is, I had boxing in my life because there was times in my life when my life was really, really good in my 20s because I was able to go back to the boxing club mm -hmm. and, 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 to, and to go in there and to have a bit of discipline in my life, even if I was only there for a couple of weeks at a time because I was like, you know, because I was so busy living the mad life in my head. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm grateful that I had boxing to go and come to as, as, as while life was going mad. So I used to come back, man, have a fight or two and then fuck off again. Do you know what I mean? And come back and go sparring and, and then... Good luck, like, Graham began gone again, like, do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. I was never really in it long term in my 20s because I was always coming and going and, and, and causing trouble and, and just, you know, <laughs> just living, living a crazy life, man, you know? Um, so, when, 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 I, when I gave up the drinking the drugs, I went back boxing and I really fell in love with it again like I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I, I went back, back, I think it was 
five years now, 33 years. 20 a.m., man, when I went back amateur boxing, went back to my club, Corpus Christi, and went back, had a fight, and then my, my trainer said, look, you're, you're, you're doing well, you know, let's go to the Munsters. One day, the Munster Leeds, went to the All-Irelands, got beaten in the All-Irelands, had a couple more fights. You know, I was really enjoying boxing, man. I was really enjoying boxing, but I was never a skillful amateur. Like, I knew I was never going to win elite titles or, like, you know, I, I wasn't good enough. And that's the truth. Like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit here and say, oh, I was this and I was that. I wasn't good enough to win those, those, those Irish titles. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't the technical fighter. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I couldn't, you know, it just wasn't me. Like, so then I was, I was training with a couple of guys. Like, why don't you give, give going pro a go? Like, and I was like, nah, it's not, maybe not. But then, then I started training really hard and I had a couple of spars with some tough guys. And then I went to England and I went over to Ricky Hatton's gym, I went to Kieran Farrell's gym, and I really enjoyed sparring pros, you know what I mean? Coming forward, hands up, throwing punches, you know, I really enjoyed it, man. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that was kind of it, man. I turned pro, man, and, and I really, you know, uh, and, I, and I enjoy every minute of it up to, up to now, you know what I mean? I enjoyed the fact that I, I was able to turn my life around and, and go from a kid who just enjoyed amateur boxing, was just a tough kid, never really this fucking standout amateur, to now being 5 and all as a professional fighter. And who knows what's on the horizon, like, you know? Yep, exactly. And I say every day is a, a, a sort of, as a, as a new experience and sort of every day you're yeah. sort of kind of like going. I'm learning, I'm learning every day. And I knew when I turned pro like that I had a lot to learn about the game. But looking at my boxing now to even two years ago, I'm a completely different fighter now. Like, you know what I mean? I've been working on myself. Even in the last six months, like I built a gym out the back of the house. And, you know, I've been training really hard out there. For, you know, training on myself. And working on things that I that I might have worked on in the gym and stuff like that. So I feel even being in Spain, like I feel like I'm way better now than what I was. You know, you're never too old to learn new things. You just have to be willing to adapt and willing to be teachable. I'm a teachable person today. So I'm enjoying boxing again, man, which is good for me because I wasn't enjoying it for a long time. You know what I mean? And that's the truth. Like there's no point in, in being on the bush. I wasn't enjoying it. And now I'm I'm loving it, man. I'm loving boxing again. I'm loving being back in camp. I'm loving going sparring. I'm, I don't know, like, and I'm sparring Paddy Donovan, like the guy is beating you up, like in the ring, like, and I'm still loving going in sparring, like, you know what I mean? So that's a good sign for me, man. When I'm enjoying it as much as I am now, like, you've definitely found it, found the found the bug again, as you say. You know, you could add adrenaline rush. That, that's it exactly, man. You hear that saying, like. The boxing bug, I found it again, man. Do you know, like there was even like over the last year, I wasn't watching as much boxing as I used to, whereas now I'm back watching boxing every single day. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like I'm, I'm back looking at clips on YouTube. I'm, you know, my small fella loves boxing as well. He's only six and he's really, really good. So, like, I'm back watching boxing with him. Do you know, I'm, 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 I'm back. Like you said, I have the bug again, man. It's, it's great to, to, to have that excitement about it again, man, you know. And it's good to see the smile in your face as well with it all. You know, you're talking the way and you're smiling the way. You're just love, loving life, you know. It's... Yeah, and it's great to be back, man. It really, like, it, it's... I, I, like, like I said, man, like, I only actually done an interview with Kieran McCoy today, and I, I've never spoken publicly about my addiction or my, my ending because I, I never felt the need to because I, I didn't want anyone feeling sorry for me or playing the violin. But I think now is a good time as ever to, to be speaking about it openly with, with the people that are probably struggling going through this pandemic and just to show yeah. that... There is, a, there is a better life, but I, I struggle with my head every day, man. Do you know what I mean? I'm an addict. I have mental health problems. So for me, boxing is a savior, man. Like boxing mm. is a savior for me. Like being back training now, man, my whole energy is completely different. Like, you know, like where some days when I'm, when I'm not, like when I'm not training or whatever, like I don't want to get out of bed, man. Mm. I mean, I, when I do go to bed, I'm going to the fridge and I'm eating any bit of shit I can or modern takeaway and I'm just... I'm moody and I'm cranky and I'm fucking the wife is, you know, it's just not a good vibe for me. Mm -hmm. So like, it's great for me mentally, man, to be able to, to be back in the gym and to be back working towards something positive. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's a really good thing for me. Like, and I guess and, sort of the wife sort of probably saying that, that, that you weren't yourself sort of a sight box. And so she sort of, yeah. just, just stop doing a head on Graham and just go there. No, my, my, wife's a, my, wife, my wife is my best mate. Like, she's the hardest, but she'll tell me as it is. Like, do you know what I mean? Yep. She'll be like, you're acting, the, you're acting the prick. Like, you're eating <laughs> shit. You're staying up late. You're fucking, you have to put on loads of weight. You know, you're acting the prick. Like, get back training. Like, whereas now it's like, you know, I'm up, I'm up earlier in the mornings. You know, I'm, you know, it's just, there's a better presence about me when I, when I have training in my life. You know what I mean? So I mm -hmm. just need to keep focused, right? you know? Yep, and, and obviously just over five weeks away from returning to the ring as well. What what um what are you going to camp? I know before you were uh, light middleweight. Are you going to stay at one fifty four? No, gonna... I think myself and my trainer Sean Kelly. We've had a chat. I'd say I'm probably going to campaign at one sixty man at middleweight. We'll see if like maybe if, if fights came up at like middle, I could still probably make like middle. But I got really heavy in the pandemic, man. The first I went up to like <laughs> ninety eight kilo, man. It's no joke. Like I got really heavy, man. It's like I'm down a good, but I'm down a good, but like a, like a 
still a good few kilos to cut, but like anyone that knows me knows that I, I always have good way to cut in camp, like, but I enjoy it. But like thinking about making that like middleweight now again, like it's fucking the last two or three kilos really used to kill me, man. Mm-hmm. So like now I'm like coming down from such a high weight, I'm like, Jesus, I don't think I'll make that. Like, so this fight that I'm fighting in America has been made at middleweight anyway. So I'll be at this next fight, will be at middleweight. But like, if, the, if a fight came up at like middleweight, I could definitely do my best to make it again. Like, you know what I mean? I'd make it if I had to make it. Like, you know what I mean? But 160 would be the, would be the goal going forward. Like, you know? Yeah, I'm not, like, it gets harder to make weight as you get older as well, you know? <laughs> and, and, and you sort of mentioned you, you've, you've teamed up there with Sean Kelly. Obviously, you used to be trained by, by Eddie uh, Highland. Yeah. Um, obviously, Sean is part of the training team of Paddy as well, then. Yeah, correct? Sean, Sean, Sean is Sean and me have been friends. We're kids. It, it made nothing but sense for me and Sean to team up. We're great friends, and he's a good coach, man. He's a really, really good coach. He's a young and up and coming coach, like, and he's gonna like he will show up what he is. Like, he's he's really brought me back to life, man. Um, I gotta give him credit there. He has brought me back to life. I'm really enjoying training. And he's a big part of that. He's involved with Paddy Donovan, and um, with Paddy Donovan's camp, he's really helped Paddy Donovan. He also has Jamie Morrissey, who just turned pro there at Boxing Ireland, he's making his debut in Luxembourg, who has come on leaps and bounds because of Sean and because of the work he's putting in himself. So, like, and obviously he has Edward and Jason as well. We're all, we're all training together. Like, there's a really good buzz down there, but in the yeah. gym, like, there's, there's, we're all training together, we're all sparring together. There's a really good buzz. But, man, Sean, Sean is, um, he's an up-and-coming coach. You know, i got to give him credit. He's, he's really... He 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 also enjoys what he does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can see the enjoyment out of what he's doing. And you know yourself, man, when someone is new to something, they wanna they wanna learn and they wanna they wanna get better all the time. So he's constantly working on getting better at what he's doing. So it's great for all of us as fighters to have a coach who's 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 hungry, as hungry as us. You know what I mean? And again, like Eddie, Eddie, Eddie was the same. He was a great coach, and I and I love Eddie. Like me and Eddie are still great friends and we still speak. Like there was no bad blood there. Life got really busy for him. Life got really busy for me. I couldn't make the sacrifice of going to Dublin anymore with the new baby and stuff. And so there was just, again, that was a mutual agreement between me and Eddie. And I still speak to Eddie daily. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there was no bad blood there between me and Eddie. Either. Like, there was no like bad split. Like it was just Eddie's life had gotten very busy. My life had gotten busy. And I just couldn't make sacrifice to go to Dublin anymore, man. Yep, exactly. And I say sometimes it just, just, just happens. And obviously it's not that anything yeah. bad seems to happen. You know, it, everybody sometimes seems to think it because there's been you know, you've won the new coach, there's been bad blood or anything else. It just, things change and people's, yeah. in, the, in the day, boxing isn't number one for everybody nowadays. It's, it's a hobby more than anything for, as a boxer. Yeah. It's good that you get paid out of it as well, but it's because you enjoy doing it, it's why you do it. And Yeah, for a lo- I, 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 I do it just simply for the love of it, man. I, I love fighting, I love training, I love the whole lot of it. But like you said there, man, my family comes before anything in life, like my wife, my kids, like, you know, and, and that that's, Everything else is a bonus, man. Do you know what I mean? So as long as I know they're okay, like that, that then then I'm fine. You know what I mean? So unfortunately, I just couldn't make that sacrifice to go up there anymore. So I'm very, very grateful that Sean was able to take me on, and um, and I'm able to train on home. Do you know, it's it, it, it's it's really nice that I get to like when you have a hard spar in the gym, get to come home, and go to bed in my own bed or, or relax in the coach. And I tell you, no, again, Eddie's mother was like my own mother, and she looked after me. And I'm very grateful for that too. But you know, there's nothing like there's no there's no peace like your own place, like, you know. Yep, exactly. So so obviously we've sort of touched on it as well already. You're you're five and zero as a pro. Um, it's, it's hard to believe. It's obviously over three years ago since you made your debut. Yeah, um, yeah. Back, December. Actually, three years ago today, since my second fight in Waterford. It just came up my memories there a while ago. So so it was I three years ago today. Your second fight in Waterford. I was just looking there as well, seventeenth of February. Um, yeah. So so obviously only having fought. In, in Ireland, obviously, as a pro, and now, you, obviously, you know, to be going to North Carolina on the 26th of March, you know, yeah. you know just as I'm still speaking this as well, you're probably going, this isn't real, you know, it's not... It's not I'm going like, to be, like, be like a kid, like, you ever seen when the kids, like, are walking to, like, a, a draw, and they're walking around, like, I'm going to be like one of those kids, like, <laughs> 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 like someone's going to have to fucking guide me around, like, I'm the kind of fellow that'll get lost, like, do you know what I mean, a fucking... Go away with a stranger, like you know. I wanted other people, like. You know. <laughs> I, I um, think, so yeah, I think they go know everywhere he's going. Always, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just every just time I see him on Instagram, there'll always be a sun lounger somewhere close and good food. So you're in good hands with Deco. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a good, there's a good crew. What's going over? It's going to be, it's going to be a good buzz, man. You know, it's, it's just, it's really exciting, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know what I mean, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's exciting times ahead, man. You know. Mm-hmm. And they suddenly take off your bucket list. You say you fought in America. You know you've always yeah, been to say. Look, and that, that's America. one of the main. Yeah, that's one of the main reasons I'm doing it. It's, it's something to take off my bucket list, man. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I, 
this might have this might never happen again. So yeah. sort of was so I was like, do you want to fight in America? Yes. No, it's what's about it. Yes, one hundred percent. I want to fight in America. You know what I mean? So. Same I want to try pizza. I want to try pizza in America when I'm uh, when I when I get the win. <laughs> <laughs> Running around the ring with a slice of pizza. <laughs> ah, straight away. The minute I'm out, the minute I'm done, boom, pizza. Let's go. God help the opponent then, because you just be going in, just just merciful, yeah, yeah. just to just to finish it. I need pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get out, get the pizza. If you get somebody to stand behind your opponent with a slice of pizza, and... with a slice, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll run clean through him. <laughs> American football style, you just take him out of the waist. <laughs> I I'm fond of my, I'm fond of my pizza. It's well known. It's a well known fact. I like my grub, you know. So yeah, I like the pizza. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um. So obviously, you know. Your, your last your, your last fight as a 33 year old obviously you're only face a 33 year old so you'll soon be turning 34 in april so obviously returning to the box and now it's going to be a case of you know there's no messing about it's i'll take fights and i'm giving fights so i'm guessing obviously you want to be very active obviously and you know once you return to the ring uh, yeah all going well man all going well like you know i i i i'm a big believer of living in the present you know what i mean um so for me, it's a day-to-day -day thing, but all going well. Positive. I'm going to keep the positive thoughts going, but that this fight will lead me on to another fight, and that will lead on to another fight, and I will keep active. You know what I mean? And with the help of God, we're not going to be we're not going to be in this lockdown for much longer. And hopefully, boxing will be back in Ireland, Northern Ireland, you know, everywhere, and and yep. and the fights will be will be going again. You know, like because all like a lot of boxers in the same boat as myself. You know, like that just haven't been able to do anything. Like you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because because of this pandemic, like you know what I mean. So it's a, it's been a real kick in the stones for for a lot of box for all of us really, like for for everyone, boxing, boxing people. You know, it, it's been a real kick in the stones. So with the help of God, this fight opens doors, and and I'm, I'm kept active, and boxing is back in Ireland. You know, supporters are left go. You know, and, and things get back to normal before I do walk away from boxing. Like you know what I mean. I'd like a couple of fights where my supporters are with me. You know, I don't call them fans because I don't have fans. I have supporters from my yeah. city, my friends. You know, um. So hopefully, you know, I get a couple of fights here against other Irish guys. You know, don't care who it is. Just good fights, exciting fights. I want to be remembered for being in good, exciting fights. And that's it, you know what I mean? And I'd, I'd be very, very happy then, man, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know, as I say, I've spoke to, obviously, um, spoke to, obviously, Dominic Don Donegan. Obviously, he's had a bit of a, a back and forth in the past. I, I guess sometimes people always like to ask questions. They sort of get clickbait and stuff going. But it's not, obviously... For that, but it's the fact that you know Dominic even said himself, you know, probably sometimes it's betrayed as if he's calling people out, but he just wants to be involved in good fights. And I guess that's what you see with an Irish boxer now, they just want to be involved in good fights that they can sort of tell people in years to come. I was involved in a really good Irish yeah. domestic dust ups. Yeah, look, we, we've had a bit of beef on line and all, uh, like, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to slay him, like, you know, I could slay him to death if I wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. Like, I do that publicly on line anyway. Mm -hmm. Look, he's not a bad kid. I'm sure, like, I, like, yeah, I'm the same as him, man. I just want to be in good fights. And if that fight comes up, me and Dom, you know, I'll 100% take it. Like, and he knows that. I know, because we've, we've messaged each other and said that. Like, he knows mm -hmm. and I know, like, there's no problem with me and him. Like, we'll, if the fight comes up and it makes sense and it's on an even playing field, then, yeah, of course, 100% that fight will happen. Like, you know what I mean? But no disrespect to him or any other fighter in the country or any other fighter in the but I'm not thinking of any fight right now. I'm focused on myself because I've yeah. lost so much time. You know, it's okay for these guys who are 24, 25, you know, who have loads of time. I've lost so much time. I'm not going to be focused on, oh, I want to fight this guy, I want to fight that guy. If the fight comes up for me, if a fight comes up for me and it makes sense, I'm 100% going to take it. You know what I mean? I'm 100% going to take a fight. Of course I am. But right now I'm focused on myself and getting back to my journey and getting back to getting back to fighting. That's that's my yep. main goal and focus right now. That's all I see right now. I don't see any other fighter. I don't see anyone else right now. Do I want to be in Irish fights? 100%. That's yep. all I want. When I Like I said, like you just said there, when I leave boxing, I want to be remembered. Oh, there's Graham. You know, tough guy. Loved to be in fights. Was always in exciting fights. That And that, for me, is success. You know, yep. for my small to say, my dad was always in good, tough fights. Do you know what? That's what it is for me because I know he's going to box. Like, you know what I mean? So that's, that's what I want. That's what it's about for me. Like, it's even a, leaving something for my son to look up to. Like, mm. So right now, I, I'm doing that. You know what I mean? So for now, all I'm looking at is me, myself, and what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is, is go forward get my fight and, and, and go forward after that. If these fights come up, which I hope and I'm pretty confident they will, 
then we're going to have them. You know what I mean? That's that's the holy all of it. Yep. You know, damn is damn. Like, <laughs> so no, we've had a little beef. It's been fun, man. I enjoy that. Yep. Like, it's a bit of bit of laughing. You know, I've nothing bad to say about him. I respect any man that gets in a ring. I don't care who they are. And even if we had beef online, it's a little bit of beef online. It's about boxing. I respect any man, any fighter that has the balls to get in a ring and put their life on the line. I have nothing but respect for him. You know what I mean? Yep. No matter what I, they say about me, I have nothing but respect I for guess, him. I guess sometimes, Graham, uh, you know, pe- people look at it from the outside, sort of they go, oh, I love the beef and everything else. But the, it's never anything personal. You know, at the end of the day. No, no, I've never. Sells a fight, if it sells a fight, it sells a fight. It gets both fighters paid. And at the end of the day, you know, the, the two E's aren't the, the type of guys that, Lads after the fight would go, you know, oh, you were lucky, blah blah blah. The best man won, and that's just no, the way geez, it, man. Look, I'm fully confident. I, I'm fully confident that fight happens. I beat Dominic, like fully confident, like. But you know, I'm not saying it's like I know it's gonna be a good fight, like. But I have not. Like, there's no personalized stuff with any fighter in Ireland. You know what I mean? Like my name's mentioned with a couple of fights. I'm not against any fighter. Like I just said to you, there, man. Like no matter what level you're at, whether you're an amateur boxer, like a journeyman or a world level beater or whatever you do, white collar, I respect any man that gets in the ring. And especially the guys that are fighting on the Irish boxing circuit because it's a tough game, man. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. selling tickets, all that stuff. Like it, it's not easy, man. Do you know what I mean? This game isn't easy. No matter where you are fighting in the world, like people are losing their life over this over this game. Like so I, I have not more respect for, for boxing, man. I, I love this sport and I respect every man or woman. That gets in a ring and puts their life on the line. I respect them, like you know. And, and particularly, obviously, at the moment, you know, with the, with the whole pandemic and stuff going on, that you know, people's having to fight in, in different countries. You know, you have Luxembourg, Spain. You know, people's having to fight all over the place just to get fights. But I think yeah. once people are seeing that Irish fighters are involved, for people that can get to these shows, they're not missing them because they know that Irish fighters are just made of a special grade that no one else can get close to. Yeah, yeah. You know. We're um, we're we're a good breed, aren't we, the old Irish? <laughs> they say that there's no, there's no there's no beating the Irish as they always say you know. No, there's no beating us, boy. There's no beating the Irish. <laughs> um, obviously, since since you since you turned pro, you know, um, I think when when obviously Andy Lee and everything else passed, you were then the only Limerick fighter. Yeah, yeah. They obviously now with you know with Paddy Donovan, Paddy obviously Paddy Donovan, you've been sparring. Um, obviously Jimmy Morrissey just obviously has announced his turn pro today, and then you've obviously um, Eddie and. Jason Harty and Jason Hardy. So there's quite, quite, a, quite a lot in Lumber. Siobhan, Siobhan, is, Siobhan O'Leary as well is down here as well. Like, but she, she's she's a, she, I know she's the people say she's from Kerry, but she's one of ours. Like, you know what I mean? She's Limerick. Do you know? What? Well, like I know I know she and she'd probably kill me for saying that. And if you do, so if you are, when you are watching, I'm very sorry, but she's one of us as well. Like, you know what I mean? She's she's Limerick. Like, so. She's adopted against her own accord. Yeah, oh, she's she's Limerick. I know she's she'd probably kill me for saying it, but she's one of us. Like, she's Limerick. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and obviously, what's what's what have you made of, you know, I know obviously you're very close with Paddy and things and you've been sparring him quite a bit. Mm. Obviously a shiner there as well from him. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Kurt, courtesy of Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> what have you made of Paddy's rise, obviously, in the pro ranks? He's obviously been touted as obviously Ireland's next best thing. Yeah, like, like I'll, I'll give you a quick run. Like, Paddy, I used to spar Paddy's dad back when I was 20. I actually put up a clip of my son doing pads with Paddy's dad in the ring the other day. Mm-hmm. And I used to spar. I used to spar Paddy's off back when I was 20, 21. And Paddy and Edwards used to be used to be training there when they were same age as my son, seven and eight. And you could tell back then they were good back then. Like you could tell back then they were going to be really good kids. Mm-hmm. Well, like watching Paddy now, like I, I've always been close to the family. Their father was a very, very good friend of mine. The boys, Paddy and Edward, are very, very good friends of mine. We're all very close, and all the Limerick community boxes are all very close. But watching Paddy. Rising, even through the amateur ranks, man. I knew, I always said it, he was going to be, he was going to be special, like, you know what I mean? And you know yourself watching him now, he's just fucking gifted. I don't even think people know how good he is. I was inspiring him the other day, man. I'm like, I, I consider myself tough, aggressive, come forward guy, you know what I mean? Man, trying to hit him, at sometimes it feels like you're getting hit by two fellas. He's so good, like, <laughs> like you know, I hit him once, I was like, where did that shot even come from? Like, you know what I mean? He's just... He's just gifted, man. Like he, I, I really like a massive step up. He's taking tomorrow night or Friday night. A massive right, step up. Like you know that yourself. Like you're a big boxer, man. Sazer Askel, like he's no pushover. Like he's a mm-hmm. very, very tough fight. But man, Paddy's just like taking it in his stride. Like I think he's going to do a number on and Sazer Askel. Like I only sparred him last week. I was his last spar there on Saturday. Was it Saturday? And he's just he's razor sharp, man. Like you know what I mean? He's he's. I honestly, I honestly believe he's get. Like I don't even think we know how good he actually is. He's getting better and better and better every time, man. You know. Mm-hmm. He's really getting better every time, man. So I, I'm looking I, forward I to watching him do. I guess a good thing for him is, is is he hasn't been seen a lot yet. You know, I know when he fought the last last card, card he fought was it the Frank Warren show? 
was it uh, one of the other cards? And he and he was on before the live show started. So I guess in some ways it may help him because you know some of some of his opponents might not be able to see too much footage of him. Yeah, yeah, and that was a tough fight as well, that guy that he took. That was a big step up that fight he took in his last. I can't remember his name, but he was good, man. Like he came to fight, like you know what I mean? Like he he he's taking step up after step up, which is really good to see for these for these young prospects. Like I love like like I say to everyone, like I'm just a boxing fan with license. Like I love boxing, like so we so many good young up and coming fighters in the country, like you know what I mean? And I, mm-hmm. all the lads in Dublin and, and all the lads around in Northern Ireland, it's come great, all the lads around the country, it's unbelievable to see, like, and it's great for, for us Limerick guys to have Paddy as well and Edwards, you know what I mean? And Jason and, and you know, Jamie, Lee, and all the boys that are coming through, you know what I mean? It's it's great for us as a city to see that man coming through, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, Ireland as a, as a country to have so many good fighters coming through. It's really, it's really good, exciting time for us boxing, and that's why I'm saying hopefully. The pandemic can kind of fuck off soon with the help of God. Yeah. We can get back to normal boxing so we can see these guys sitting in the chairs watching them in the ring, you know? Yep, exactly. So that's the one thing I must, you know, I think it's just over a year past since the last show I got to in, in the Ulster Hall and I started going, you know, what is boxing anymore? I know, you know, it's like okay. people always say when the pubs reopen and you get in and, and you're able to have a pint and to have that taste, but I don't know. It's, it's me sitting at ringside being able to hear somebody land in a punch and and 100% the- I agree, man, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's, just, it's just a different, it's a different buzz. Like, I love watching boxing, man. It's great that we, it's great that all these promoters are putting on behind closed door shows, like MTK, uh, Eddie Hearn, you know, top rank, Golden Boy, whoever's putting on. It's, it's unbelievable, man, and it's really enjoyable that we're getting to watch boxing, but it's just, it's different, isn't it, man, without all the fans in the audience. It's, it's just a bit different, like, isn't it? it like, is. when, you, when, when you're watching a fight and, and there's 50,000 fans there, even, the, even if you're watching in the sitting room, the electricity that you're getting from that is just, it's just a different buzz, isn't it? It is. Like it. And obviously, it's been both football fans as well. You know, obviously, in football, you start yeah. class as an armchair supporter if you don't go to the matches. And you feel like an armchair boxing fan now because it's all yeah. you can do is watch yeah, it on TV, yeah. you know? Even um, watching the soccer, man, like, like I love it, man. You love it. You know yourself. I, I know you're a big fan of soccer. Like, it's different even without the fans there, like, isn't it? Like, it's, yeah. it's you know, you're missing the atmosphere, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I'm looking forward to bringing my smile to Manchester. Like, he loves United. Like, I'm looking forward to bringing Manchester. But when is it going to happen? Like, when are we going to be able to go to Manchester? Like, you know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. when is this going to end? Like, do you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's fucking, it's crazy, man. It, it seems like it's never going to end. Like, and, and what have you sort of made? You know, obviously, you, be, you say you've been watching more and more boxing and things. What have you made of, of boxing during the pandemic? We've, we've, we've obviously had upsets with, you know, no crowds or next day no crowds and things. Obviously, Irish boxing has boomed. You know, you know, you only have to look at obviously some of the performances have been there. Probably, probably one of the more standout ones would be Tennyson. Oh um, man, I love him, man. Oh, I'm a big fan of James. What a fighter, man. What a fighter. He's he's exciting as fuck, isn't he, man? He's mm-hmm. man. I really like him. Like the kid is tough as nails. I'm looking forward to seeing him in those big fights, man. I put him up there with those with those big guys. Like he is a class fighter, man. I, I, I look boxing. Like, like we just said there, yeah, like it's hard not seeing the fans, but fair play like to the lads, the Irish boxers, you know, that have gone over and fought with the no crowds. Like, because I'm sure that's a lot harder to fight with crowds. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's harder without the crowds. Because like, you know yourself, man, when, when you get hit or when you're a bit down in a fight, you know, having the crowd there supporting you kind of gives you that push on, you know? So, like, fair play to the Irish lads. You know, it's great that we have boxing to watch and stuff like but. It's, it must be harder for our lads like that are over there like without without the fans. You know what I mean? So I, I have massive credit to the lads, all your fighters. You know, and it's great that we're able to watch them. You know what I mean as well. Like so, boxing is it's a lot rougher. It's a lot. You know, we're missing out on a lot, but I'm still grateful that we're able to watch boxing, especially our own lads. You know what I mean? Boxing yeah. like. And, and you know, I know in, in some ways, you know, it's like it's not that people can't g themselves up, but the, sometimes it's the the praise. You know, of somebody roaring and shouting every land a good shot. They're not hearing Big that time. now, and all they're hearing is the opponent wins or whatever. And it's it's hard to get yourself if you're not firing all cylinders and you don't have a crowd there behind you. You need, sometimes need that wee G up to get yourself going. And Big just, time, man. Big time. You know, maybe if they do what they've done, we, you know, I know um, wrestling obviously wouldn't be as class as a real sport, but but they sort of had TV monitors and things like that, and like the WWE shows were sort of I've showing. Seen it. My, my smart, my smart little watches it. My smart loves it. He's big into wrestling, always, really. But I've seen they, they kind of put them up on the screens, and they put them yep. up on the yeah. Sort of, sort of the way to go forward. They have money. They have money to burn. Like they WWE. Like they literally have money to burn. Like, you know. Yeah. So, so where where would you obviously you know where would you like to have goals, ambitions? Obviously, you know. 
say, say what, well, 33 now, so over the next couple of years, you know, where would you like to, you know, if we were to say to you now, right, Graham, you have your choice of what you want over the next 24 months in boxing, what would you like to have him? Another title, man. I just want to be in another, you know what I mean? I want to get another title for my, for my small fella. Uh, you know, to have it home for him to look at. You know, like, that, that, like, I turned pro at 30. I didn't have this massive amateur career. I didn't come into this game with, with lies and with fakeness. I was, I was honest as I, as I could be, you know. Came into the game just because I'm tough. You know, I like to fight. Um, and that's it. So if I can get myself another title, man, that would be the cream, of the cream of the crap for me. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to be saying unrealistic things. No, if I get another title and something comes knocking on my door, of course I'll take it and I'll bite the hand off it. So, like, who mm. knows the opportunity? But another title, man, would be just be fucking unbelievable for me. Like, you know what I mean? It'd be, it'd be great. Like, yep. so that, that's that's the goal and ambition for me, man, you know? And, and there's obviously, you know, the, there's a the prospect of some great fights. You've obviously Dom and, and Eddie Tracy and, and I think Craig, yeah. Craig McCarthy and things like that as well. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's plenty of fights to be made there. And, and as there's long great as, fights there, and, and, and all the lads are good lads. There's, there's great fights there to be made between loads of Irish fighters. You know what I mean? So, so who knows what's going to happen? But I do know that that something's going to happen. I am, I am, I am fairly positive that God got me back into got, not that I left boxing, but got me back into the zone of boxing. Got my mm-hmm. head right. You know, I'm feeling good again. I'm enjoying it again. You know, and I do believe everything happens for a reason. This fight from America is after coming to me, so I do. I fully believe at some point I'm going to get what I what I want because everything that I have in my life today. I have I have brought into my life, you know what I mean. Yeah. I haven't uh, nothing in my life is by accident, like you know what I mean. I've worked hard for everything. me and my wife. My, we've worked very hard for what we have, you know what I mean. And that's what I, you know, that's what I, I try to show to people. Like nothing is given to you in this life, like you know what I mean. But I'm going to continue to work hard. I'm going to continue to keep my head down, to be humble, you know, and 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 hopefully reap the rewards. Yep, definitely is. Well, look, obviously, well, what do you thank you obviously for your time, Graham. Um, Thanks very much, Steve. I really appreciate you having me on. You're doing a great thing for Irish boxing, man. Keeping the boxers, you know, keeping interviews with the boxers and keeping them, you know, rel- relative. You know, it's great, man, and I really appreciate it. It's um, it's it's more the fact that obviously I was, I was able to to share your sort of your your joy of obviously getting back in the ring and stuff as well. You know, so yeah. um, I know the next five weeks will probably be tough and obviously making weight and things like that, but but it'll be worth it whenever you get into the ring again. Yeah. Yeah, make him wait. But you know what, man? Like, I, I, make him wait. I, everyone always says to me, like, Graham, man, why are you such a fat bastard? Like, why are you always putting on so much weight? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that, but I enjoy cutting the weight and, and, and you know, flogging myself, flogging myself today in the gym. And, you know, I enjoy it, man. You know, so look, it's going to be, it's going to be tough, definitely, a million percent, you know, but I enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to, I, I'm looking forward to even that part, man. I'm excited about that part of it, you know, the cutting and the, the knots. It's all a part of the game, yeah, like. But listen, it was a lovely chat, Mosley, and hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon. Thanks, Stephen. Right, I really appreciate it, pal. No and don't Take forget, care. man, you know, the greatest team ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boy. Thanks, boy. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.